12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. As the president and House Speaker drum up support for their debt ceiling deal, there are already signs of pushback. I'm ABC's Justin Finch with what's fueling the friction. And let's look out there with live cam. We're starting at 64 degrees. Got a lot of rain yesterday in some parts. We're going to be checking in with Mike to see if we can expect any more of that down the line. And good morning to you. It's one of those mornings where I woke up. I didn't know where I was, what time it was, what date it was, but it is Tuesday. <laughs> it is May 30th. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. I guess it's a sign of a good night, maybe. I don't, I don't know. I just, story? I'm, no, I'm just, I guess I'm tired this morning. Yeah. Lost track of the week so yeah. far, but Steph, glad you're back. Thank you. Mike, it feels like a Midwest basement out there. It's damp. <laughs> uh, no, I was going to say, did you write, you know, you didn't write any checks or buy anything. I hope in your, your stupor. <laughs> Can I get back to you on Amazon? Okay. Okay. I, I like that description. Yes, it does feel like a Midwest basement. If you've never felt that, this is a step outside. A lot of humidity, all the moisture in the ground, and that is leading to some fog. Now, we've got some very clear skies out there. A little bit of in the way of some clouds, but as far as visibility, it's pretty good. Go up to Kerrville. Half mile visibility right now. A hint of fog there at Port SA. Some around Gonzales, and we're just getting started. So we are going to see this fog thicken up in places because, again, all that moisture in the ground. Mold is on the uh, the moderate side this morning, and uh, yeah, temperatures are actually down somewhat. We are down in the uh, the 60s as of right now, and even some upper 50s in portions of the hill country, thanks to some of that rain cooled air. And then yeah, a lot of sunshine today. Temperatures compared to normal are still going to be held in check. We're going to be at 88 later on today. Normal high is 90, so on paper that looks pretty good, but I'll tell you one thing, yes, it will definitely be sticky out there with all the moisture hanging around. But again, we get kind of a chance to uh, to dry out a little bit, let some of this, this rain really get soaked in before our next rain chance, which is not that far down the road. We'll talk about that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. Thank you, Mike. New this morning, one person is dead. Around 30 people had to be evacuated during a fire early this morning at an apartment complex downtown. It happened around 1.30 this morning in the 300 block of Flores near West Travis. When firefighters got there, they found smoke and flames coming from the third floor of a five-story complex. They were able to put the fire out quickly. During the evacuation, we're told one person was given CPR on the way to the hospital but died on arrival. Arson investigators are now trying to figure out a cause. According to the city's active fire page, as many as 40 units responded to that fire scene. Dogs dumped and left behind in a northwest side neighborhood, and it was all caught on camera. Neighbors want the dogs picked up for the pup's safety, their own and their pets. Home security camera shows that an SUV cuts its headlights, push the dogs out and takes off. One neighbor says that the dogs were abandoned in the Timber Ridge neighborhood on May 19th and have been roaming the neighborhood since. He has called the city 311 line multiple times, but that the dogs have not been picked up. Animal Care Services says it's being handled with a trap because the responding officer did not find the dogs in question while patrolling that area. Someone's child might be mistaken for a small animal or that someone's pet, you know, might kick in that prey drive of those two dogs. The issue of dumping dogs and stray animals in San Antonio has gotten the attention of State Senator Jose Menendez, who is thinking about potential legislation to help the problem. Taking a live look at Capitol Hill this morning, the race to avert what the White House calls a catastrophic default is underway in Washington. Congressional members are returning from the Memorial Day recess today to begin taking up the debt ceiling deal. The president and House Speaker are pressing their parties to pass the measure quickly. And as ABC's Justin Finch reports, some lawmakers are pushing back. From the White House to Capitol Hill, a joint effort to win bipartisan backing for the debt ceiling compromise brokered by House Speaker Kevin McCarthy and President Joe Biden. Well, I feel very good about it. I've spoken to a number of the members. The president sounding confident after calls to Congress members, including Senate Republican leader Mitch McConnell. A White House official telling ABC News the administration is working the phones with senior staff and cabinet officials calling more than 60 House Democrats since Saturday. At the Capitol, Speaker McCarthy working to whip up Republican support. I think it's good for the American public. You're going to have Republicans and Democrats be able to move this to the president. But already, at least 10 House Republicans are leaning towards or are planning to vote no, arguing the bill doesn't cut enough federal spending. And progressive Democrat leader Pramila Jayapal worries the cuts are too deep. 
The 99-page deal would suspend the $31 trillion debt ceiling until January 1st, 2025 and lock in new non-defense spending restraints. The agreement claws back $30 billion in COVID funding, rescinds $20 billion of IRS funding, expands work requirements for some Americans on food assistance, ends the federal student loan payments pause in August, and preserves Social Security, Medicaid, and veterans' benefits. The bill does not include tax increases for the wealthiest Americans or big corporations, which Democrats wanted. A tight timeline now for Congress. The deal is on track for a House vote Wednesday, then off to the Senate, where it could find friction. The deadline, June 5th, when the Treasury Secretary warns the U.S. risks default. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. The Texas House has named 12 of members uh, to prosecute against a case against impeached Attorney General Ken Paxton in the state Senate. It's a Republican majority board of managers made up of seven Republicans and five Democrats. So now the Senate will hold the trial. It's unclear when that will happen, but it will be before August 28th. Before that, leaders will have to come up with the rules for the trial and then present them to the Senate June 20th in order for Paxton to leave and never hold elected office again. Two thirds of the Senate would need to support that. Paxton's accused of bribery and corruption. Right now, his duties as attorney general have been suspended until the Senate trial is over. In Iowa, a ninth person has now been found alive in the rubble after an apartment building partially collapsed in Davenport. Videos posted online show rescuers pulling a woman to safety last night more than 24 hours after part of that building sheared away. The fire chief in Davenport says that Monday they believed no one was still in the building after crews spent hours searching. Now plans to demolish the building today are reportedly on hold. The cause of the collapse is now under investigation. 437, 64 degrees. It's all about softball right now. Up next, the local teams that are just a few steps away from winning state titles and one team that is still undefeated. Right now, looking for problems via Transguide right now as we await Stephen's arrival here in the studio. 410 at Villa Main. Stream keeps going in and out. There's another shot, thankfully. 410 at Morrison on your early Tuesday morning. And let's look out there with a live cam. Calm morning, I guess, after all that rain we had yesterday. 64 degrees and looking to warm up a little bit during today. But we are going to look in with Mike to see what we can expect for the rest of your week. We'll be right back. The New Braunfels Canyon softball team is certainly no stranger to success at this time of year. The Cougarettes have advanced to the third round or better in each of the last eight playoffs. They've also made plenty of memories in Austin this year. Canyon making their sixth all-time appearance at state and their first since 2019. But there's something a little different about this year's run. They're currently the only team in the state tournament that's still undefeated. Does that matter to them? I don't think so. Um, there's at least one team <laughs> that's already there that's that's probably not going to worry at all about our record. So um, I don't think that changes anything uh, as far as our preparation and the way people are going to perceive us. Um, I, you know, it's nice to have. It's nice to, to have their own record books going in, but I don't think it's anything that changes anything. Well, somebody was excited there in the background. Here's the matchup. 31-0 Canyon goes up against 37-7 Colleyville Heritage. At the 5A state semifinals Friday afternoon at 1, winner goes to state on Saturday. Good luck. The DeHenna softball team's already in Austin. The defending champs got this great send-off yesterday as they departed for Red and Charlene McCombs Field, where they've won two state titles over the last four years. The journey for their third title continues later this morning with UAL Class 1A state semifinals against Natchez. First pitch scheduled for 10 a.m. If they win, they'll play the title for the title again on Wednesday. Well, it all comes down to this. Heat and Celtics Game 7 in Boston. Trip to the NBA Finals on the line. Former Spur Derek White, the hero from Game 6, keeps the Celtics in it. Layup in the third. Cuts the deficit to 8 points, 66-58. But Miami answers back in the fourth. Jimmy Butler pokes the ball away, gets it back, and throws it down on the break. No miracle in Boston last night. The Heat eliminate Boston in Game 7. They win 103-84. to 84. That means the 2023 NBA Finals are set. Game 1 between the Nuggets and the Heat is coming up Thursday night, 7.30 in Denver. And of course, you can watch it live 
right here on KSAT 12. Very exciting. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, it was it was nice to see Derek White do so well. Right, especially uh, those Game 6 heroics, right? Definitely, and even even last night early on, I mean, that's the part of the game that I watched. He was doing, he was kind of carrying the team. So yes, he was. That. He's one of the former Spurs that we like to cheer for. Yes, yes, but I mean, you know, if he wants to come back, that's cool too. Derek, give us a call. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> time now, 442 and 64 degrees for now. It's everybody's favorite thing to hate doing the laundry. Up next, how to know if you're washing more than you should or too little. Up next, an 11 year old boy talks about the moment he was shot in the chest by police in his home. And welcome back. It's 445. An 11 year old Mississippi boy is speaking out about the moment he was shot in the chest by police in his home in an ABC News exclusive. ABC's DeMarco Morgan has the details in today's GMA First Look. Is there a reason that these officers showed up and were like, you know, okay, this could be a very volatile situation or dangerous situation? And this morning's GMA First Look, an ABC News exclusive. It was just over a week ago that 11-year-old Adarian Murray called 911 to his Mississippi home after he says he was awoken by an argument between his mother and her ex-boyfriend. But when police arrived, the unthinkable happened. An officer shooting Murray in the chest. Now the boy and his mother are speaking out to GMA and GMA3. Can you talk about that moment when you heard, did you hear a gunshot? I didn't know who got shot at the moment until I seen my son ran, running out. And coming up on both Good Morning America and GMA3, we'll hear from 11-year-old Adarian Murray for the first time in an ABC News exclusive interview. With your GMA First Look, I'm DeMarco Morgan, ABC News, Grenada, Mississippi. Well, the average American family does about five loads of laundry a week, but are we overdoing it? 12 on your sides, Marilyn Moritz found out just how often you really need to wash your stuff. Erica Dickman has three boys and mountains of laundry. I do laundry every single day. Every single day. Stains, sweat, dirt. Yeah, the stinky stuff definitely goes into the wash. But how often does she really need to wash sheets, towels, and comforters? I do comforters every single week. Not necessary, says Consumer Reports. Unless your pet sleeps on the bed, every three weeks will do the job. But don't go too much longer. Things you can't see can accumulate, like dust mites, bacteria, and dead skin cells that can trigger allergies and irritate skin. Sheets are another matter. CR says wash those every five to seven days sooner if somebody's sick afraid of dank moldy towels erica washes hers after every use don't throw it on the floor hang it up if you allow it to dry in between it'll keep those things down you won't have to wash it as often we generally suggest in the three to five days. Underwear, t-shirts, socks, and gym clothes do wash those after every use. Don't bunch them up in a bag and leave them in there. It'll become a science experiment. As for your pants and dress shirts, unless they're stained or sweaty, save yourself trouble and wash after three wears. Jeans, even longer. As for which detergent, Consumer Reports recommends Tide Plus Ultra Stain Release, Tide Oxy, and Persil Pro Clean Stain Fighter. But don't overdo. More is not necessarily better. Marilyn Moritz, KSET 12 News. Let's check the roads out there with TransGuy. Looking over at I-10 at Bernie Stage Road. Very quiet this morning after all that rain we had. And I-10 at West Avenue looking good right now. Laundry is kind of a never-ending battle, especially when you have kiddos. Yes. Mm -hmm. you, you, uh, and I don't blame her for having to wash every day. You want to try to stay ahead as much as you can, right? Right, because when you fall behind, it's even worse. Absolutely. I, I try to do the same, but my, my big issue is like the stains. Like there's always yeah. ketchup, mustard, chocolate, whatever. There's always something. It's always scrubbing. You, yeah, you put the, you know, whatever shout on or something like that. It's mm -hmm. like, well, can it put it on there? Can it wait a little bit? Right. Oh, so, anyway. And then stripping the bed's one thing, but remember now actually throw them in the dryer and make it before you crawl back into it? Yeah. There's a whole than, different personal challenge for most people. <laughs> nothing <laughs> yeah. worse than walking upstairs and really trying to go, oh, oh man, come help yeah. me change the sheets, please. Anyway, yes. all right, let's talk about all that right now. Some folks didn't see a drop of it off to the east, especially, but there were a lot of folks uh, that saw a whole bunch and then some. And yeah, the backyard was actually flooding a little bit. I'm surprised that pool didn't, didn't get uh, filled up there, but boy, that's a... <laughs> 
hopefully the backyard dries out a little bit there. Thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture. Love those shots when it really tells the story on what is going on. So here's who got the rain. Like I said, off to the east, some folks did not see any, but there was this swath from about Fredericksburg down through Comfort, San Antonio, and down to the southeast where you picked up a whole bunch. And the nice thing, too, is this is the area northwest of Bear County up into ports, portions of the hill country where there still has the, the greatest drought as of the drought monitor last week. So rain fell in exactly the right spot. And look at that up uh, in and around Comfort, about five inches of rain. These are radar estimates. And then heading a little bit further south down 10, about three inches of rain on the northwest side of Bear County, just over three inches of rain and a little bit further down to the uh, south. Now officially out there at the airport picked up three tenths of an inch of rain. And then look at this radar estimate there on the southeast side of downtown, about two inches. And yeah, over by Hondo, almost three inches of rain. And look outside, it was one of those where I couldn't even hardly see through my backyard. It was coming down that hard and heavy. Right now, good visibility out there at the airport, but we do have some fog up there in Kerrville. Half mile visibility as of right now, eight miles Port SA. So just hints of it, and then a hint over there around uh, floor, or excuse me, around Gonzales. Temperatures are much lower. We did get some rain cooled air coming on in here. So we've got mid 50s in the hill country, 64 here in town and even though these numbers are very low they're below 60 so it's kind of comfortable the the dew point temperatures and the air temperatures are running neck and neck. So you've got upper 90s, close to 100% humidity out there, not much of a breeze. And that's the same thing here in town. And that's why it is so kind of damp and muggy and why we have some of that fog. Here's the water vapor imagery. And as this uh, loops back on through, see the big circulation right here. That's that low. And that was off to the west of us yesterday. It was moving across the area. And this is what sparked those uh, showers and thunderstorms. So now this has moved on out. We're sort of on the the back side of it, if you will, some drier air coming in here, and that's the side in the atmosphere that is sinking. So that's why we're going to be seeing a lot more in the way of uh, some sunshine today. Temperatures, we are in the mid 60s, a lot of clouds, some fog, and then we're going to see more sunshine later on today, make it up to 82 at noon, and then a high temperature up to 88. So we'll still be just shy of the the normal high temperature but again you're going to feel it with all that uh, all that humidity out there and humidity is going to be sticking around the next few days we're going to be again close to normal 89 90 right now is normal and uh muggy the rest of the week at least the lawn's going to dry out a little bit you can cut it and then another chance of rain is going to move in here by the weekend yeah muggy is the, the price we have to pay for all that rain we got. But when everything's nice and green, you got that moisture around, that sure. helps to keep temperatures down just a little bit. It's not that searing dry like we had last year where it was so easy to heat up so much. Yeah, we'll take that over last year. Yep. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. 452, 64 degrees. A big milestone for Morgan Wallen. Up next, how the country singer just passed up Taylor Swift on the Billboard charts. Little Mermaid remake is not living up to financial expectations at the box office for us. Plus, more success for country music star Morgan Wallen. For all this, what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. The Little Mermaid making a splash in its debut. If the weekend estimates hold, the live action remake of the animated Disney classic scored the fifth best Memorial Day weekend of all time, with an estimated $117.5 million opening in North America. That's a tiny bit below expectations. This is your captain speaking. Last year at this time, Top Gun Maverick kicked off the summer with the best Memorial Day weekend ever, $160.5 million. Disney's the parent company of ABC News. Last night we lit the liquor top. It's the best run for a country album at the top of the charts in over 30 years. Morgan Wallace, One Thing at a Time, notches its 12th week in a row at number one on the Billboard 200 album chart. Passing Taylor Swift's 11-week reign with Fearless starting in 2008. The last country album with that many weeks on top. Don't tell my heart, my achy, breaky heart. Billy Ray Cyrus's debut album, Some Gave All. That's the one with Achy Breaky Heart on it, which spent 17 weeks at number one beginning in June of 1992. This was my best bet to really to have an impact. I feel what they're going through. Out today, learn the incredible backstory of another country music star with the documentary Jelly Roll, Save Me. It chronicles the rapper turned convict, turned country stars rise from the lowest lows to the highest highs. You can watch that now on Hulu. And singer, actress, and Frozen star Adina Menzel with a birthday today. She's 52.
And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Athens in ABC News, Los Angeles. 457, 64 degrees. Nine people are hurt after gunfire erupted along a beachside promenade in Hollywood, Florida last night. So up next, an update on the children who were caught in that crossfire. Plus how the Children's Bereavement Center of South Texas will now be able to provide Uvalde with important services for years to come. And a quick check of the roads with Trans Guy looking over at 281 North at Loop 1604. We do see flashing lights there. And Stephen Cavazos is in the studio, so we're going to be checking in with him very soon. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. A fire turns deadly in downtown San Antonio overnight. Just ahead, what arson investigators are saying so far about how it happened. Since the Robb Elementary shooting, how the community will soon get a much needed permanent facility that focuses on healing. And back here at home in San Antonio, out there looking live, waiting for the sun to come up, which should be in just a bit. It is very damp out there this morning after storms in our area last night. Good morning, everybody. It is Tuesday, May 30th. Thanks for joining us. I uh, hope you had a good Monday yesterday. Uh, but the rain, I mean, we knew it may come or, you know, maybe not. But then, wow, when it dropped down, it was a lot of it. Some of these packed a punch and a few mm -hmm. folks lost power, Mike Osterhage. Yeah, I was one of them. Yes, indeed. It was uh, blinking on and off as those storms were moving on through the area late yesterday afternoon and into uh, last night. And boy, some folks didn't see anything. Some folks got way too much rain. We're going to show you some of the pictures coming up here in a minute. 64 degrees right now, so we did get some rain cooled air that came on in here. The, notice how the dew point is at 62, so on paper that's not bad, but relative humidity is 93%. We have a little bit of a breeze out there and not a complete cloud cover, and so these are some of the ingredients that are going to give us and are giving us or helping out with some fog. We'll make it up to 88 later on today. Normal high 90, so in the ballpark of where we should be, but it's going to be a very humid 88 degrees. The aquifer went down half a foot in yesterday's reading. Going to be interesting to see what it is with today's reading because a whole bunch of that rain fell in the recharge zone and the allergens molds on the moderate side. That's also going to be interesting to see when the updated count comes out later on this morning with all this uh, moisture hanging around here and all that moisture is helping out with some of this fog. Now, Kerrville was just down to about a half mile. Now it's back up to three miles. Gonzalez at five hint of it hint of fog around pleasant in there and then in and around the metropolitan area. So just to be on the lookout as the morning rolls on and these numbers can just go back and forth very, very easily. Temperatures 50s in the hill country. So yes, it is kind of pleasant out there, but then again, you got a bunch of humidity. So notice how the dew points are neck and neck with those air temperatures, light wind, and that's why we do have some of that patchy fog out there. So mostly cloudy skies again, some patchy fog around this morning, then more sunshine, upper 80s. Yes, a very humid upper 80s. 80s. Same thing next couple of days. Tomorrow, Thursday, a couple of more clouds around on Friday. And then we go into the weekend. Not a rain out by any stretch, but there will be a couple of showers around here. Probably a few more or a little bit better chance of rain on Sunday than going into Monday as well. And temperatures will be held down thanks to uh, some of the extra clouds hanging around here just in the mid 80s coming up this weekend. Great looking forecast continues. Love it. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen, I just caught the corner of my eye some flashing yep. lights out there. And uh, unfortunately, Mike, looks like we are keeping an eye here on a crash here. 281 North at Loop 1604. Now uh, we have the overpass. It's actually blocking our view there, so we're not able to get a closer look at it. But it does appear that this is on the off ramp of Loop 1604 going westbound near 281. Again, flashing lights there out of the scene. Not a good area, though. Uh, we're going to have to watch it closely and get on the phone with our friends over at Transguy to see if we can get a different angle of the conditions out there. But overall, it doesn't seem to be impacting the majority of traffic because it's still very early right now. But again, we'll, we'll find out more information for you. See it right there popping up on our map. We'll get that information for you shortly, but you can see right now for the rest of the morning commute, you're off to a good start there. A little bit of that construction that could cause some slowdowns, but right now it looks like we are in the green. As we take you to some of those travel times, 24 minutes along I-10 eastbound. If you're heading in from Bernie, it's not too bad if you're traveling in from Bulverde either. 20 26 minutes along 281 southbound and about a 26 minute drive time for everyone heading down from uh, New Braunfels on I-35 South. But let's get it back here on Transguide. I'm going to step out in the studio to get on the phone with our friends over there to see uh, what's going on. But again, this does appear to be on the off ramp of Loop 1604 going west. We'll find out more information and I'll have an update coming up a little bit later on in the newscast. Mark. 
Thank you, Stephen. A fire in a high-rise apartment building overnight has turned deadly. A person who suffered smoke inhalation has died at a hospital. Katrina Weber is live in the 300 block of North Flores near West Travis. And Katrina, was anyone else hurt? No, as far as we know, no one else was injured. Uh, the fire happened right here behind me. It looks like just another day, but this is not how it was a little bit earlier this morning at the Villa Hermosa Apartments. Now, let me give you a look at the video so you can see we had about 40 fire units here at one point this morning. This fire broke out after 1.30. Firefighters say they found flames and smoke coming from the third floor of this five-story apartment building. They did uh, pull one person out of there who had suffered smoke inhalation. That person was taken to a hospital and we confirmed with the medical examiner that the person has died. Now we don't know anything else about that person just yet. Checking the internet, though, this apartment building uh, appears to cater to low-income seniors and people with disabilities. That's what the, it says on the internet. We can also see a sign on the window that said Saha, so it appears that this, this is a Saha property uh, where this fire happened. But again, uh, one person killed in this fire, no one else injured, and we understand that several apartments in this building do have either water or smoke damage as a result of the fire. Reporting live downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. The Texas legislature regular session has wrapped up after nearly five months of work. In that time, lawmakers have sent 1,026 bills to Governor Greg Abbott's desk. He has until June 18th to sign or veto them. Meanwhile, Governor Greg Abbott has called for an immediate special session, saying, quote, many crucial items remained unpassed. Abbott says special session number one focuses on cutting property taxes and border security. Other items on the special session agenda include protecting children from life-altering gender mutilation, adding $1.4 billion to make Texas schools safer, required armed security at all schools, and provide access to mental health care for students at all schools. In the years since the Robb Elementary shooting, the Children's Bereavement Center of South Texas has been ingrained in the community providing free counseling. Now work is almost completed in building their permanent facility there, the space donated by the St. Philip's Episcopal Church next door. The work is being done inside, is also donated by several companies out of San Antonio and surrounding communities. When it's completed, there will be private counseling offices, art therapy rooms, and an outdoor space to promote healing. Very excited. What I need now is to be able to find a couple more grief counselors who are qualified because we've gotten really busy and I know we're going to get busier the first week of June. In June, the center is hosting a four day grief camp. Sokol says the two they need two master's level grief therapists to help continue the important work they started this last year. The dedication ceremony for the permanent facility will take place coming up on June 29th. A violent, chaotic end to the holiday weekend. Memorial Day beachgoers in Hollywood, Florida, north of Miami, were running for their lives. That's after shots rang out, injuring nine people, including a one-year-old. And as ABC's Rihanna and Alley reports, police say the gunfire erupted after some sort of confrontation. This morning, nine people, including children, are recovering after this shooting in Hollywood, Florida. Capping off a violent Memorial Day weekend. I was laying down having a good time at the beach and all of a sudden I heard like pop, 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 like about six, seven shots. Everybody started running. Officials say around 6.30 p.m., gunfire erupted on the Hollywood Beach Boardwalk. A camera captured the chaos as shots rang out, people running to safety, some even racing into the water to escape the gunfire. There was multiple shots at this uh, place called Margaritaville. Five adults and four children were shot, a one-year-old among those hit. Video shows police and bystanders treating victims. A spokesperson for the local health care system says all are in stable condition. An eyewitness says he saw several young men fighting in front of the stores lining the boardwalk when one pulled out a gun and started shooting. Preliminary investigation reveals that this was there was an altercation between two groups that resulted in gunfire. The shooting was one of many over the holiday weekend. In Columbus, Ohio, at least five people were shot at a block party. Three teenagers are expected to survive. And in Chicago, police say at least 47 people were shot over the weekend, nine of them fatally. New Mayor Brandon Johnson admits there is a lot of work to do. This weekend, what you saw on display is that everybody recognizes is that it's going to take all of us to unite this city and to build a better, stronger, safer city. 
Rihanna Nally, ABC News, New York. 509, 64 degrees. And just ahead, we're going to show you a low-cost smartphone attachment that brings blood pressure monitoring to your fingertips. And have you noticed older cars on the road lately? Up next, Ted, how look at how inflation has many people saying no to brand new vehicles. Let's look out there with live cam. Kind of calm after the storm, 64 degrees. A lot of wet roadways, though, after all the rain we got. And things should be warming up this afternoon. We're going to check in with Mike for all those details coming up. 513 or old cars are sticking around longer, according to a study. S&P Global Mobility says 12.5 years. That's the average age of the car is on the road these days. That study shows it's one of the fastest increases we have seen since the Great Recession in 2008. COVID, the economy, and vehicle durability are some of the contributing factors as to why we are still holding on to our older cars. The trend might be sticking around. In 2028, we expect that there's going to be over 122 million vehicles over that 12 years of age, which is about 40% of our vehicle fleet that will sit beyond 12 years of age. A local mogul mechanic says his business has more than doubled in recent years. He says anyone who wants to keep their investment in good shape should keep up to date with routine maintenance. 514, 64 degrees. Up next, how a popular app is making it easier to screen share during video calls. And next, how Google is making it more simple to block and screen unwanted calls. And a quick check of the roads with TransGuide. Still problems over there at Highway 281 at North Loop 1604 South. We're going to check back with Stephen Cavazos. Who says you can't get everything you want? Like going for bold without going broke. And staying true to your taste while staying on budget. Who says rising costs means lowering the bar? Settling, no need. Get the brands you want, the prices you want, whenever you want. TJ Maxx, where you can always afford to be you to the max. For muscle cramps and spasms, TheraWorks absorbs quickly for relief. So get back at it. TheraWorks works. For fast muscle relief, TheraWorks works. Try TheraWorks and get back at it. Your record label is taking off, but so is your sound engineer. You need to hire. I need Indeed. Indeed you do. Indeed Instant Match instantly delivers quality candidates matching your job description. Visit Indeed.com slash hire. In today's Tech Bytes, WhatsApp is reportedly testing a new screen sharing feature for video calls. Users can record or show what's on their screen just like you can on Zoom and Microsoft Teams. The feature is currently available only on Android phones. For now, only select users have access. Next, the Google Pixel call screen feature is letting users select their level of protection. Spam calls are declined with the basic level. The medium level rejects spam calls and screen suspicious calls. And the maximum protection level screens all unknown numbers and if you want to take your blood pressure there is a low cost app for that engineers in san diego have developed a clip that works with a smartphone to monitor your pressure from your fingertip the apparatus may end up costing as little as 10 cents a piece those are your tech bites have a great day 518, Mr. Cavazos. Yep, uh, and you know, unfortunately, we have those flashing lights out there, 281 at 1604. Still the case, and I spoke to our friends over at TransGuide, so this does appear that it's on the off-ramp there. Uh, you can see the flashing lights just been uh, behind that bridge, and no word yet on any injuries. We hope everyone's doing okay. The good news here, it's not impacting traffic because it is along the frontage road of 1604 going west. Uh, but again, you can't really make a good get a good shot of the conditions out there because unfortunately that bridge is blocking our view. But this is the best shot that we're going to get of the area. Let's show you our map. Uh, what we're not picking up is any slowdown. That's the good news out there. But remember, this is along the frontage road as you approach US 281. So just take it easy out there. Make sure to move over our slowdown for those first responders. Now giving you a wide look at the metropolitan area. It is very quiet this morning, much like we started our morning yesterday. But we know a lot more folks will be returning to work. 
work. Uh, kids possibly again for the last week of school. So just remember to slow down and take it easy as the commute does get rolling. We'll keep a close eye on this, but a quick look around town does show that things are moving along just fine. 10 at Crossroads, 35 at Alamo. Mike Osterhage, uh, no wet roads, at least from these shots at Transguide. So that's good news. You know, there may be still a couple of damp spots in places. Uh, yeah, it's good to see that the, the main roads are dry and the rain ended a long time ago, so we did have a chance to dry out. But I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if there is some standing water in spots because it was coming down really hard and heavy. And some folks in a matter of Gosh, maybe an hour or so, if that, picked up two inches of rain down there. W.W. White at Rigsby. Out at the airport, officially three-tenths of an inch. So, again, it really depended on where you were as to see who, as to who got that much rain. And this is the uh, satellite and radar loop going back 12 hours. Obviously, there's nothing going on right now. But those storms developed out there in the hill country and came down. And, boy, they were definitely packing a punch when they moved on through. And a lot of this rain fell out here where... The, the heaviest or the, the worst drought situation still remains. So hopefully that put a big dent in that, uh, that drought situation. We'll know that by Thursday when the updated drought monitor comes on out. All right, visibility out at the airport is pretty good. Traffic's moving along very well. We do, Kerrville, look at that. 10 miles visibility now. Just a half an hour ago, it was down to about a half mile. So it obviously has improved, but still have some fog even just uh, south of town right there. So you want to watch out for some of this fog to form up throughout the course of the morning. The low, which gave us the rain, and you can see this on the water vapor imagery and that kind of counterclockwise circulation right there has now moved well off to the east. And so we've got with this darker shade of air, some drier air upstairs in the atmosphere, but there's still going to be the chance for a couple of showers, maybe a thunderstorm well off in our extreme eastern counties later on today. But for the rest of us, we are going to get that chance to dry out. However, still going to be a lot of humidity around here, so you'll feel every bit of these temperatures. We're in the mid 60s, some clouds hanging around here, some fog this morning, make it up to 82 at noon. Top off 88 later on this afternoon with a lot of sunshine around there. Now, let's jump ahead to the weekend because tomorrow as well as Thursday and most Friday are pretty much going to be identical. Upper 80s, a lot of sunshine, some clouds in the morning. And then we go into Saturday and this model does have the chance for a couple of showers. Again, I just want to point out this is kind of a broad brush that's painted on in here, but we will have a few uh, showers hanging around here on Saturday and perhaps a better shot of rain than Sunday and maybe into Monday. So we'll keep an eye on what's going to transpire over the next uh, few days or excuse me over the weekend, but the next few days. Everything's pretty much cut and paste. Upper 80s right at uh, basically at normal. Normal's 90 right now. Normal low is at uh, 70. And then we are going to see that chance for a couple of uh, showers, a few thunderstorms around here. I think a better chance of rain right now looks like it would be Sunday, Monday. Obviously, we'll monitor things. And look at those temperatures by the weekend back down to the mid 80s. Again, you're going to feel every bit of the, uh, the 88 today, 89 the next couple of days with the humidity. But... All that green grass out there and flowers blooming and everything else with all this beautiful rain. So. Yeah, that's good news. My husband was like, oh, we should have bought grass. I was like, <laughs> I know. <laughs> we didn't know. <laughs> Why didn't I get seeds? So, yeah, yeah, my exactly. neighbor put some sod down a couple uh -huh. weeks ago, and now it looks like it's been there a year. Wow. Yeah. What That's perfect great. timing. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> 523, 64 degrees. Up next, what we know so far about the fifth John Wick movie, plus the Ninja Turtles move up their latest theatrical release date. The Heroes in a Half Shell returning to theaters soon, sooner than expected. Plus, the story of John Wick is not over yet. Here's CNN's David Daniel with today's Hollywood Minute. I'm going to die. Maybe not. John Wick Chapter 4 may not have been the end for Keanu Reeves' long-suffering assassin. Lionsgate's motion picture chairman mentioned on a company earnings call, John Wick 5 is in development, along with the previously announced ballerina spin-off starring Ana de Armas and the Continental streaming series. No word whether Reeves will be involved. Lake Mead. Why is there so much death associated with this lake? Travel Channel's Ghost Adventures is getting a special showcase on Discovery Channel as the paranormal investigators head to the Hoover Dam's Lake Mead for a two-hour season premiere. Ghost Adventures Lake of Death premieres Wednesday. What the heck are those?
those things they look like little Shreks to me. If you hunger for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles the way they hunger for pizza, listen up. Paramount has moved up the release of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem two days. The heroes in a half shell are now due to hit theaters Wednesday, August 2nd. Cowabunga, dude. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Time now, 527 and 64 degrees for now. President Biden and House Speaker McCarthy have finalized a deal to suspend the nation's debt ceiling until January 2025. Up next, when a full and final vote is expected by the House. And do you need some extra money? How a nationwide lifeguard shortage could work to your advantage this summer. And ahead on GMSA at 6, our great grad series continues with a student from Northeast ISD, how she's helping others on campus and in her community. The deal on the country's debt limit could finally be completed just ahead of the compromises both sides had to make in order to get the deal sent for approval. And let's look out there with live cam. Mike says we are drying out after some rain last night. He's going to have a first look at the forecast in just moments. Good morning to you. It is Tuesday, May 30th. Thanks for joining us. I hope you had a, a good extended weekend for those of you who did. And wow, that rain came down. Yeah, most of the day was pretty dry. Those uh, showers started to develop just after noon. A couple little spots here and there and then really blew up. And yeah, it was dumping rain in buckets and then some. Right now, we've got some pretty good visibility out there at the airport. And just below that banner, you can see it right there. According to my app, it that is the uh, planet Jupiter. So we've got uh, some clear skies out there. A couple little clouds here and there. I'm going to have to check out and see what that one is as well. Sorry about that. Didn't didn't catch that one, but should have a pretty good looking uh, sunrise out there. Got a few clouds still hanging around 64 degrees. So we are well below normal. Thanks to some of that uh, rain cooled air that was still in place. A normal low is 70 and then dew points at 62. So even though both those numbers are lower, they're running neck and neck. So relative humidity is very high. And with that, we are looking at the threat of some fog. Now there was plenty in Kerrville just about an hour ago and now it's back up to 10 miles visibility. Hints of it in and around town, five miles visibility at Gonzales, a bit more down around Carrizo Springs and off to the, uh, the southeast. So we'll just kind of keep an eye on things over the next couple of hours, especially right at as the sun is coming up and just after that, a lot of times that's when we see some of our thickest fog. Molds on the moderate side, going to be interesting uh, to see what happens when the updated count comes out in about uh, a couple of hours or so with all this moisture hanging around here. So temperatures are going to climb up into the upper 80s later on today. The normal high is 90. So in the ballpark and a lot of humidity though. So that's definitely going to be a factor. It will definitely feel warmer than 88 degrees and that's going to be the situation the next couple of days. We'll talk about our next rain chances, which are just a little bit down the road. That coming up in just a few minutes. Traffic Authority, Steven, still got those uh, flashing lights out there? Unfortunately, Mike, we are still seeing those flashing lights there at 281 North at Loop 1604, uh, Loop 1604 South, pardon me, but this is a crash that we're keeping a close eye on. Remember, it's on the frontage road and it's not impacting the majority of the commute, so that's good news, but no word yet on any injuries. Let's get a quick look around town at 10 at Brazos. You can see we're off to a pretty easy start for the most part. 10 at Crossroads doesn't really show a lot of activity out there, but uh, that's uh, good for anyone that has to hit the roads in the next few minutes. But as I mentioned, just watch out here. That crash has been reported along Loop 1604 westbound, the frontage road, as you approach US 281. We're not picking up any delays or congestion in the area because it's still relatively early. But still, you have to watch out for those first responders who are working to keep their roads safe. Giving you a wide look at the metropolitan area, it's the same story that we saw yesterday, some quiet roadways, and it does appear a crash may have popped up off of US 90 there uh, along 35. We'll find out exactly how that's impacting the commute and uh, what if there was any shot of the conditions from Transguide, but we'll keep a close eye on that. If you are traveling in this early, 37 northbound, heading in from Pleasanton, it's still pretty pleasant. 27 minutes is what you can expect. US 90 heading in from Castorville right now is a Perfect time to head out the doorway. 30 minutes is what you can expect in a 16 minute drive time. Not too bad along I 35 northbound heading in from Lytle. But back here on Transguide, uh, getting a little bit busier there as you saw off US 90 at Medio, I 10 at Crossroad. A very uh, quiet morning on a lot of these shots at Transguide, but we'll keep a close eye on things and hope for a better update there along 281 coming up a little bit later on. Steph? Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, one person has died as a result of a fire in a high-rise apartment building. That fire broke out early this morning at the Villa Hermosa Apartments downtown. Katrina Weber is live where it all happened on North Florida's near West Travis Streets. And Katrina, has there been any word on how this all started? 
No, nothing uh, disclosed to us just yet. We did have investigators here earlier, but they have not released any information yet. Now, uh, it looks like just another day at the Villahermosa Apartments, but that hasn't been the case uh, this morning. Let me give you a look at the video to show you what it was like earlier. This fire broke out after 1.30 this morning. At one point, there were 40 fire units here uh, fighting this fire. They say that they found fire on the third floor, flames and smoke coming from that third floor when they got here. They were able to evacuate about 30 people from this building. They did take one person to the hospital who had suffered smoke inhalation. And we understand from the medical examiner's office that that person has died. No other information has been released at this point. And again, we don't know yet what caused the fire here, uh, but those people whose apartments were affected, we understand, are going to be placed in other apartments uh, in the meantime, as all of this still is underway, all the investigation is still underway. Reporting live downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Taking a live look at the White House this morning, President Joe Biden and House Speaker Kevin McCarthy must now convince dissenters in their parties to accept the debt ceiling deal that they reached over the weekend. The president says he feels good about the compromise he negotiated with the House Speaker. A key test comes later today when the House Rules Committee is scheduled to consider the package and vote on sending it to the full House for a vote expected on Wednesday. And as CNN's Reed Vinion reports, Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen has warned if the U.S. cannot borrow more money as soon as June 5th, we would no longer be able to pay our bills. It takes uh, the threat of catastrophic default off the table. President Biden describing the debt ceiling deal he reached with House Speaker Kevin McCarthy over the weekend in positive terms, but also acknowledging the concessions he made to get the deal. The agreement also represents a compromise, which means no one got everything they want. The deal would suspend the debt limit through January 1st, 2025, and put a limit on spending for two years, excluding defense and veteran spending. In 2025, spending would grow by just 1%. The deal would redirect $10 billion of new IRS funding and billions in unspent COVID relief, and temporarily expand work requirements for some adults receiving food stamps. Biden's concessions, including those on food stamp work requirements, have been met with dismay by some progressive Democrats. Various House Republicans have also expressed concerns. I'm not willing to, to vote this country into more debt. In a series of tweets on Monday, GOP Senator Lindsey Graham of South Carolina blasted the deal, saying it doesn't have enough money for national security. He also slammed Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell for supporting it. The next step happens Tuesday, when the House Rules Committee meets to consider the Biden McCarthy deal. If it clears committee, it could go to a full House vote Thursday. Throughout that process, Biden and McCarthy have their work cut out for them, bringing dissenters in their parties to the middle. For Good Morning San Antonio, I'm Reed Binion. Today, disgraced Theranos CEO Elizabeth Holmes will be moving to her new home, a federal prison about three hours from San Antonio up in Bryan. She's sentenced to spend the next 11 years there for overseeing a blood testing hoax that became a parable about greed and hubris in Silicon Valley. Once she enters prison, Holmes will leave behind a nearly two-year-old son and a three-month-old daughter that were born during her high-profile trial and conviction on four counts of fraud and conspiracy. Russia has launched a pre-dawn attack on Ukraine's capital, killing at least one person and sending Kyiv's residents again scrambling into shelters. In Kyiv, at least 20 drones were destroyed by air defense forces in Russia's third attack on the capital in the past 24 hours. Moscow authorities, meanwhile, have reported a drone attack on the Russian capital. Residents reported hearing explosions and the city's mayor later confirmed there had been a drone attack that he said caused insignificant damage. China has launched a spacecraft carrying a new three-person crew for its orbiting space station. This comes as plans to put astronauts in mood before the end of the decade are announced by China. The Shenzhou 16 lifted off from the edge of the Gobi Desert in northwestern China earlier this morning. The crew, including China's first civilian astronaut, will overlap briefly with three others aboard the space station who will then return to Earth after completing their six-month mission. China says it plans to expand the space station and launch a crewed mission to the moon before the year 2030. Time now, it's 539 and 64 degrees for now. It's costing more to make your hamburger or hot dog taste better. Up next, why the price of condiments is rising higher than even the current rate of inflation. Another person is found alive in the rubble of an Iowa apartment building that partially collapsed. Up next, video showing rescuers pulling a woman to safety last night.
And back here at home outside with live camp. Beautiful morning out there, just a bit on the humid side, but generally clear skies. That sunrise should be gorgeous a little bit later on. It's now 542 now to the apartment building collapse in Davenport, Iowa. A woman was pulled from the rubble last night more than 24 hours after a section of the building came crashing down. Her rescue came just as crews were preparing to demolish that building. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has a story. This morning, a ninth person found alive in the rubble after an apartment building partially collapsed in Davenport, Iowa, possibly delaying plans to demolish the building later today. New video shows rescuers pulling a woman to safety last night. More than 24 hours after a section of the building sheared away. At this time, the building is structurally unsound. It's believed two more people may still be in the building. A woman tells the Quad City Times her cousin is missing. The newspaper reports police pinged his phone to his apartment before it shut off. And another family at the scene says they believe their loved one is still inside. Yesterday, officials cleared the building for demolition, saying they believe the building was empty after crews spent hours searching. Because of the concern for life by our first responders to get in the building knowing that that building was unsafe to help folks. Because of that, they save lives. But now plans to demolish the building today are reportedly under evaluation. Hey, y'all just standing there! Meanwhile, protesters are gathering at the scene, angry over the city's plan to demolish the building just two days after the collapse, calling it a hasty decision. The cause of the collapse, meanwhile, is under investigation. City officials had ordered the owners to make fixes to the building after a string of complaints. Resident Linnea Hoover recently took this picture after she saw bricks falling during the repair work. What were some of the problems that you were seeing? The big one is leakage, plumbing leakage, um, sewage leakage in the building. There would be giant holes in the hallway where water would leak through. Andrew Dimber, ABC News, New York. Time check now 544, 64 degrees. Up next, a nationwide lifeguard shortage is also happening here in San Antonio. Up next, the incentives the city is offering for those who apply and get hired. Checking Transguide, earlier we saw some flashing lights right underneath that concrete beam that was crossing the screen. They're gone now. There's I-10 at West Avenue. We'll check back in with Stephen Cavazos coming up on the other side of the break. And welcome back. It's 548 now. In your morning consumer headlines, while gas and food prices are leveling off, condiment prices are still way higher than they should be. According to Data Assembly, the price of a bottle of ketchup it's up nearly 28% from last year. Mustard is about 13% pricier, and that's a lot more than inflation. So what's causing this? Well, experts say producers are still struggling with rising prices on commodities like sugar and wheat used in their products. Also, some companies are using inflation as an excuse to boost their profit margins. Kind of feels like the latter sometimes, doesn't yeah. it? Well, many pools and beaches are open after the Memorial Day weekend, but some cities are looking at uncertain season due to a lack of lifeguards. New York City is facing its worst shortage on record. Many places offering monetary incentives. Here in San Antonio, people who are selected for lifeguard and outdoor pool supervisor positions are eligible to receive a $500 incentive and a $75 swimsuit reimbursement. In Boston, officials are offering hiring bonuses of $1,200. Not enough lifeguards means several city beaches and pools will have to stay closed. Experts say to fix this long term, the country needs to get young people excited about lifeguarding at an early age and offer them a career path forward. And time now is 549. Uh, this side of the angle, you know, looks pretty good there on the roadway. So let's check back with Stephen Cavazos. Well, we did have that issue along 281 at 16 to 4. And as we went to commercial break, uh, looks like that has cleared out. So better news report out there. We're able to give you a quick look around town. There's 410 at Morrison. A little bit busier there at Ray Ellison. Look at all that traffic that's coming through this early in the morning. A lot of folks returning to work today and kiddos returning to school. So just remember, drive safe and the roads are expected to be a little bit more congested. But let's get you to where that problem spot, the new problem spot is, I should say. A new crash has been reported along US 90 eastbound at loop 410. Uh, now, based on some of the transguide cameras in that area, it does look like this could be all along the frontage road. I'll have to get on our phones with our friends over at transguide to see if we can get a different view of the conditions, but it's not really impacting traffic. Let's just hope everyone's doing OK. Uh, better news to report over here, though, looks like we have a little bit of a glitch as we take you back over here to 1604 westbound, where we did have that crash. It was reported along the frontage road near US 281 that cleared out, but it was lingering around for probably about an hour now. But uh, 
Uh, first responders have already worked to clear that up, so that's better news to report. Giving you a wide look now at the metropolitan area and some of our surrounding areas, we're still off to a pretty good start, guys. But remember, we still have plenty of road work taking place. To, uh, take a point here, FM 1535 Northwest Military Highway sidewalk improvements. Now, this work begins today around 7 o'clock, and we should see it wrap up around 6 in the evening. This is going to take us all the way to Friday, June 2nd. What we'll see out there are various lane closures in both directions from Loop 1604 to Hebner Road. But you can always head over to ksat.com slash traffic. There is a full list of all the current closures that are there. Uh, but uh, right now, it doesn't look like any major road closures on Transguy. Things are moving along good, but busier than what we saw yesterday. Night to the west, sunrise in the east happening right now. Yes, indeed, it is. Looking, but first of all, I'm going to show you this picture. And last night, if you were in the middle of those storms, wow. there was a ton of lightning. It sounded like some of those lightning strikes were right in my backyard. And beautiful picture there. One thing in these storms, do not go outside when there is lightning around. Even if it has passed, you still have to wait at least a good half. I mean, before the last clap of thunder, lightning strike. Um, yeah, don't go. It's, it's extremely dangerous to go out there. If your garbage cans are blowing down the street or anything like that, you can get them later. But thank you very much for the, the KSAC Connect picture. Love that one. So this is what we were just talking about. Yeah, sunrise is definitely in store. We've got a lot of clear skies out there right now. But now, last half hour, I mean, it was quarter mile or half mile visibility in, in Kerrville, it came back up and now it has dropped back down. Zero visibility, pea soup out there heading out 10. Elsewhere, it's not bad, but we just have to watch out for a little bit of fog to uh, try and form up. So we've got some down around Carrizo Springs as well. Hints of it, LaGrange, Gonzalez, Victoria. But again, Kerrville, that's where the, uh, the thickest is as of right now, heading out into the hill country. 87 high temperature yesterday, so we started climbing up and then those clouds started to fill on in there. We had a couple of 90 hanging around here, but otherwise it was on average mid 80s all around the area and about the same situation. A couple of degrees warmer than that later on today, but nothing just way off the charts at all. I mean, in and around the metropolitan area, we're averaging mid upper 80s, a lot of 88s on the board, 84 for high temperature today, Bernie, as well as in Lotus. Here's what the uh, computer model looks like and the system that brought us the rain yesterday, it was that low that was working its way across the area. That's working off to the east. Now, there still may be a couple of showers, a couple of thunderstorms well to the east or to the southeast later on this afternoon, but that's pretty much going to be about it. And temperatures, we've got a few clouds hanging around this morning, some of those patches of fog, but then we'll have plenty in the way of sunshine. Make it all the way up to 82 at noon, and then high temperature today, like I said, makes it up to 88. So, forecast today we are going to be or over the next seven days beg your pardon uh, is going to be pretty consistent that's the theme that's been going on here upper 80s lots of sunshine all the way through the rest of the week a couple more clouds on friday we do have a small chance for some rain uh, Saturday, a little bit better sunday monday and temperatures will be held into the mid 80s but again nothing way off the charts no spikes or anything just really consistent plenty of humidity mm -hmm. but Hey, everything's nice and green out there. Yeah, if you round down away from 90 for the foreseeable future, we there will be no issues whatsoever. Yeah. And of course, some folks will be up your backyard, maybe up to uh, 90 degrees. But uh, yeah, this is nice. Yeah, well, we'll take this over last year. Let's keep it going. Yes. Thank you, Mike. 554, 64 degrees. Look at your winning lotto numbers. Pick three, three, five, seven, fireball five, daily four, six, nine, eight, one, fireball seven. Cash five numbers, four, five, 15, 18, 33, Texas two step, two, 22, 28, 33, bonus ball 19. And Powerball 21, 33, 35, 62, 64, Powerball 24, power play two. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, we'll start with the latest on the Memorial Day shooting in Florida. Nine people injured at Hollywood Beach. What we know about the victims and the search for those responsible. Also overnight, another person saved from the partial building collapse in Iowa. We're going to have the latest on that investigation and the dramatic new images of that disaster. Those stories and so much more right here on GMA. Ahead in the next hour of GMSA, a number of stray dogs in San Antonio getting attention from out-of-state groups. What they're doing next month to help out dogs who are getting dumped. Plus our great graduate series continues with a student from Northeast ISD, how she's helping others on campus and in her community.
And up next, air travel over Memorial Day weekend went a lot smoother than expected. Thank goodness. So look at why and what's next for this coming summer season. And checking Trans Guide right now, the sun is up on the eastern horizon, looking at 281 right now. There's I-10 at West Avenue. We'll be right back.